Anna is so sweet and cute. For my match yeah. against XQC, she sent me two videos that are like 10 plus minutes long. Oh, me too. Hey, these are yeah, some yeah. things to remember, <laughs> blah, blah, Wait, blah. she sent you then... videos too? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then against Rubius, she was like, you. Three minutes. Hey, listen, I love you guys both, and I care about you both, and I hope you both win, and I'm sorry, but like, I'm just coaching you both, and I don't know what to do, and I hope you can get yeah, yeah, too. Yeah, she said this. I was like, you're so nice. Yeah, she's amazing. Anna is amazing. <laughs> the best teacher we could have. Absolutely. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. All right, Anna, this is it. You got two of your students, Pokey and Rubius, the XQC of, of, uh, of, Spain? They call him that? Is that is that a fair nickname? I think? think XQC is the Canadian Rubius. I must say, Rubius was there before. He's the OG. I'm gonna defend him. Oh, but I he, love he himself, that. I he love himself that. memes about it. He himself memes about that, so it's all right. But yeah, I, my heart is absolutely torn, and uh, I work with both of them very closely. I I have five students in PogChamps, but these are the two students that I have been working the most closely with. So I especially am nervous for both of them on how well they do, and I just wish they could both win the match. But obviously, that's not possible. So I just want them to do their best as if they were my two kids and made the better player win. I love it. I love it. Well. What do you think so far of what they've done, right? We see a main starts with this sort of, uh, vin you know, it's it's become kind of a typical theme in a lot of pogs, this London system, which is defined with d4 and then bishop at four, everyone. Rubius developing the knight to c6 and bishop out. From a principled point of view, they're both following the basics, right? Get our pieces out and see what happens. Yes, uh, Pocky really loves the London system. It's her opening from the very start. She fell in love with it and she loves it. So that was that was a conscious decision on her part to choose it instead of E4. Um, and Rubius has prepared this setup against the London system. So everything is going according to plan from both sides. I think Bishop B5 is a great move and I haven't taught it to Pocky. For this match, um, our strategy was, I was telling Pocky, I'm torn and I don't know how to, how to prepare both of them. So since she is also working with Grandmaster Robert Hess, I told Pocky that it's better if for today she prepares with Robert. So I don't know what they prepared exactly. And then I prepare separately with Rubius. In that case, there's no, everyone knows every everything, but kind of like... It's as it should be. You shouldn't have full information on your preparation. It's hard. It's hard so when the coaches are working happened. with more than a few people. A, a trick Rubius handles well, but this is going to be this is going to be hard. I mean, the the queen is under attack. The knight is pinned. He he kind of has to find the move queen e six here. Oh. I think so, and I was worried that if he chooses a d6 square, which looks like a natural choice, but this runs into a discovered attack, knight takes c6. It was so difficult to react to knight e5. I think Pocky showed a brilliant preparation. Bishop b5, knight e5 kind of refutes my setup because I didn't expect such an aggressive setup um, uh, by white in the London. It's usually c3 and everything is very calm, but right. no, bishop b5 and knight e5 immediately pointing out that the knight on c six and the queen on d7 could get into trouble well and now we see Brilliant. we see pokey executing perfectly the point everybody is after knight <laughs> takes c6 the queen is under attack and and she's bishop, winning a piece, <laughs> uh, a piece. Pokey, you're doing it normally you're normally i'd be nervous it. to do this anna with someone who is speaking a language that i am not fluent in but because we have the most uh famous spanglish content creator in the world that's that's who you are we're gonna let you translate what rubius is thinking about right now he's saying that he has to go to e6 for sure. it's the first time that that someone plays this against him no había visto este puto alfil eh joder chaval la francesa eh la francesa la virgen He's currently talking about the Virgin Mary, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> La Virgen is usually a reference to um, to the <laughs> to the Holy Family. Yes, I think he has taken on c6 uh, with the queen, ah. so now this is equal material again. And I agree with you; it wasn't easy for Pocky to to see what's what's the tactics there. Was there? Anything concrete, or did she have to just retreat to A4 with the bishop? I, I don't think it was simple at all. I, I'm not sure myself what was I, the I best move I don't know. I mean, honestly, if I back up, one idea I did see yeah. that it would be an advanced sort of renegade move is if, worst case scenario, you were losing your material back, probably knight D8 is a move you should play, right? Because it forces the king oh. to take and lose the right to castle. 
Otherwise, if you mm -hmm. take the bishop, you lose the queen. But again, that would be yeah. kind of a, a mega mega move there would be hard to find. So it's understandable that that um, she kind of settles in. Sometimes that's advice I would give students is, yeah. hey, like something goes wrong. Remember, if you're familiar with a structure, if you're familiar with a middle game idea, there's nothing wrong with kind of setting your sights on a plan that you know. Whether it's objectively best or not, you'll find out after the game, right? But don't lose yourself to, to getting frustrated in, in the middle of, of just an opening, you know? I think he's easily above a thousand. I would say a thousand and two hundred. And oh. I feel like Pocky's strength through uh, her rating too will jump uh, soon. Her current rating is certainly not her level. Uh, she told me that her objective would be to reach a thousand rating points by the summer. And I think that's more than doable, if not more, because she's really determined and she's enjoying the learning process. She said that uh, Pock Champs is kind of like a trial that she's like, oh, feeling how a chess tournament is. She played in block champs before. That was her very first chess tournament. Right. And I, I, I just really like that she is so committed to, to learning chess, that she, that she knows that she's not one of the most experienced participants and she wishes she could have more time to study, but she thinks of it as a journey right. and that there will be more POC champs events too in the future. And she simply enjoys playing and growing through every game. This would be a great move. Unfortunately, it does blunder the pawn, but the idea is she's recognizing, hey, my king's gonna be over here. Rubius's king is over here. I also need to attack with my pawns, much like he is. If she had if she had castled first, that would be that would be a brilliant, a brilliant <laughs> idea. Um, although what's funny, Anna, is even if Rubius sees this, that actually could be one of those walk in the parks that goes wrong, right? Because if he takes this and she moves everyone, suddenly you've actually created the opportunity. For a long distance relationship between the rook and bishop on c7 this is one of those things you could do and yeah. then the next opportunity you could blunder and it could you could lose very very quickly here i fully agree with you that it was almost perhaps better to not see it originally he wanted to drop the queen back to e8 to push e5 he wanted to go for an e5 pawn push and i think pocky realized it as soon as she pushed b4 that the pawn was hanging oh oh Bueno, oh, vale, es una manera de verlo. Um, so it, it was let's translate what he's saying. Eso, we'll uf, he's la mejor jugada aquí, eh? uh -oh. he does see if I capture this, uh, yeah, uh, he didn't see a move for Pocky there. He, he was just double checking that the rook is not guarded. Let's show what the computer did, right? <laughs> just to show you, this isn't just me and Anna over exaggerating. The computer now believes white is, is better even though white is down a rook. That tells you how dangerous this attack is. I think the move can even just be like a queen c3, and you're threatening all kinds of stuff. Just to show an example, just so that it's seen. If queen takes, you have a mate in two. You sack the rook and queen c7. It's kind of a five-head play. I'm not sure if Pokey will find that totally, but I do believe if she finds rook takes c7, then she's on track. So moment of truth right now, will she see rook c7? Pocky absolutely loves puzzles. She she has been on the puzzle grind from the very beginning, so I wouldn't be surprised if she spots some of those tactical patterns. She did it. Rook takes c7. Let's go check in with Rubius. Let's hope he plays king d8 and not king b8. Uh -oh. oh, I think he's hovering over the b8 square. May not see the discovered attack. Uh oh. I have a here, I think. King to B8 because he wants to escape to A7, but he doesn't see. Voy a throw it out, voy a throw it out, voy a throw it out. Voy a throw it out, ya estoy tirando a Martín. Actually, ya estoy cogiendo la, la mesa de ajedrez, el tablero, y lo estoy tirando al río, tío. Lo estoy tirando al río, tío. Oh, and Pokey. Oh. Está bien, está bien. Pokey she did it. it. She found it. She found the best move. Ah. Discover check, and Rubius Jaque thought he could take the rook, but la it's verga. a check. The bishop on G3 is the killer piece. You saw him try to take the rook with the bishop. He physically grabbed it. It was like, what the heck is going on here? here? Oh my gosh. What ah! a <laughs> I know. I think now he has noticed. It's still possible. I have many pieces. And that's the spirit. I always say to both of them, never give up. And this position, even though now Pocky has a queen for a rook, well, two rooks, a queen and minor piece for two rooks. Very strange material imbalance. And her position should be winning, but it's not that simple. There's no yep. checkmate pattern just yet. And uh, oh, B5 wow. though. Pocky is killing it. The attack over the A6 pawn to get to the Black King. I mean, seriously, this is, it's, 
something we said in her first match, and I know in the beginning, some PogChamps participants, they kind of expected wor encouraging words from the commentators and coaches, but we really meant it. Hikaru and I were like, I mean, she is crushing it. We knew she was getting better. She's already a much stronger player today than she was two weeks ago, just watching her chess yeah. right now. Absolutely. I, I have had the, that impression of both of them, that every match they show up to, they are, are str a stronger, better version of themselves. Rubius spots the threat and defends a6 with the only move, rook to e6. No, seriously, by Rubius, what a great move. He recognizes the double attack that the queen and bishop exert here. He defends it. She's an adorable killer, like you said. She's on track for a win. And, and Rubius now with only 39 seconds. Time management has been one of the issues for Rubius in his previous matches. His first uh, four games, so the two previous matches, he had winning positions in all four of them, but the time pressure got to him. Um, and now it is a winning position for Pocky, uh, but she still needs to find a way to push that F-pawn. I feel like if she somehow manages to support it or play bishop d3, that's also a very appealing move in this position to pin the knight that's on g6. I, I think she, she will spot one of C7, those patterns. If she finds bishop c7, I'm going to say hold the phone. Ooh, we know well. who's going to win the consolation bracket. If she finds bishop c7, I'm ready to crown her as the... Okay, not quite yet, but she's still on track, though. I mean, but I, I, I thought she was well, thinking maybe... and she was about to play this move here, but this is also very, very strong. I was going to say, Danny, that queen f5 perhaps is even stronger maybe because even she's attacking the... Right. <laughs> so, yeah, because she was spinning the knight and also supporting the f-pawn, so I think she has come up with an equally strong, if not better, move. Yep, and now, now the knight is for free. Um, she's... One thing I will say she's doing well, and she's managing her clock well, right? She's not trying to... Yeah. Sometimes when people are winning, they psychologically get too excited and play too fast, especially if your opponent is down on time. You get this... You sort of change strategies. Instead of playing good moves, you try to beat them on the clock. But she's not doing mm -hmm. that here. But look at Rubius, Rook C1, threatening Rook B1. Oh my gosh, she's setting up a last-minute mating trap. Okay. Holy bejesus snaps. Pocky needs to find a way to get some space for her king, and moving up one square uh, could be a way. Actually, oh, but no, if she, she has mating one. Here. She has mating one. She also has mating one. If she had taken on a six, but that was really hidden. Instead, she just oh, she, she just creates some space for it. her king. No, this is this is of course brilliant too because now she can run away with the king. So even though she didn't see the mate, um, oh it still God. is checkmate on a six. But it's quite a hidden checkmate. It, she was thinking more of the safety of her king. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, think now she realizes. I it. was thinking about the safety of her king. I didn't even see she had mate in one. Um, yeah. I wasn't looking. <laughs> Okay, wow. I'll, I'll, I think she will get it now. Even Bishop like before was a brilliant yeah. way to free the king. Wow, what a game. Rubius finding that last chance to set up a checkmate idea, then Pocky escaping from it by sacrificing the bishop, and now she has promoted her pawn too. She's completely winning, even though the a6 pawn was not taken. This is, of course, with two queens on the board, two Could queens for the queen. <laughs> oh my god though but when we when you've had mate and ones not execute you're already living on the edge of your seat because you don't know what's going to happen next although this move kind of shows rubius knows he's well she doesn't take it okay she runs out with the king i think maybe maybe she's concerned about stalemate or she didn't see that the rook was hanging on me she might take it now. No, she doesn't want the rook. She doesn't need it. Pokey is not screaming right now, but she is on Zoom, everyone. For those of you asking where you can see her, if, if she keeps talking to herself, we will we will un, we will unmute her to see what she's saying. <laughs> two queens versus two rooks should be should be good enough. Another E8 rook is hanging, and also A6. That that pawn on A6 has been the, the hidden threat. For the last yeah. couple of moves. I wonder if she will spot it now or will she give queen d4 check, which is also a strong move. Queen e7, classy! That's <laughs> Very such classy. a smart move. That's a grandmaster play when you're winning to just get rid of your opponent's pieces because you no longer care yeah. if it's an equal trade. Just get them off the board. So again, it's not mate and one, but if you're watching as a fan and a viewer who wants to get better, that is a very human grandmaster thing to do and uh, applauses for, for Pokey are deserved for that. Rubis no, no is trying to run with the pawn, okay. uh, and now I the only chance the last to chance is, is still made. No, I don't want to draw, sir. <laughs> Did Rubius offer a draw? Um, oh, Rubius offered a draw in the chess.com yeah. chat. Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering what happened.
happened there? <laughs> of course, Pocky refuses. I think that was a joke from Rubius' side. I can't I even hear what he's saying, saying, but I'm reading his lips and he's saying, stop, stop, stop. Tables, he's, tables, he's tables. Over over again. Avogado, stalemate. Pokemon. He's trying to get the stalemate. Look at the Pokey's problem is she's playing against someone who <laughs> knows a trick. Pocky taught me that the queen should be a knight shadow away. So the shadow of the knight is right now on CH. She will never bring the two close. She knows that when the king is in the corner, a knight shadow is needed of distance. She knows it. Tables, Pokemon. Tables, tables. I don't want to uh, stalemate, you know? <laughs> What a roller coaster! And here we go with a French Pokey we know. I do we just wanna should we just heal this part of our relationship, Anna, and I'll stop bagging on the French if you stop teaching people it. How about that? To be fair, I gave Pocky plenty of choices. <laughs> and she chose the French? She, she started with the Sicilian and the Scandinavian. She learned those openings from videos. She picked up uh, on a lot of YouTube videos. Uh, she didn't like them too much. So then I gave her the ch a choice between the Karakan and the French defense. And look where we are. Oh, my God. Now, jokes aside, we do have a fun <laughs> banter, me and Anna, on the French defense, which is a fantastic positional opening and teaches a lot about pawn structures and strategic decisions. Oh my gosh, I just blacked out. I just complimented the French and I blacked out. She's going for the right setup to attack the center immediately. That's the strategy uh, with the black pieces in the French defense. You gave up You give up some space, you give up some central control, but then you punch back immediately. And that's what she's doing. At the same time, I like bishop g5 too by Rubius to pin the knight. And bishop e7, great response to make sure that there's no e5. Yeah, I agree with everything you said, and, and they're playing principled moves, even if they're not the theoretically best moves in the French, right? Because you could argue, okay, if, if a Grandmaster sat down and was playing white here, they might they might be able to do some damage, and, and they'd probably look to open the center um, and kind of uh, punish black there. But, but also, it doesn't mean what Pokey's doing is wrong. We know c5 is the idea. Usually, it comes after an e5 advance to undermine this d-pawn. That's kind of the risk, is it, does Rubius realize that this isn't a normal French and that he might have an option to just kind of blow things open right now. I'd be curious to see what he does. I wonder if he's considering those moves. He plays bishop to a4, which may create tactical opportunities for Pokey because now the knight on c3 has too many things to do, has to be guarding the bishop and also has to be guarding the e4 pawn. Yeah, I and, think Pocky is spotting it, captures immediately. Yeah, she doesn't have to be asked why she takes it. Now, will she see she can even take with the knight here now because she's unpinned the uh, the knight to the queen. This would be okay. Both are good. In fact, actually, pawn takes is probably even better. I just thought knight takes might have really really shown that she understood uh, the power of bishop e seven. But maybe this is even better now. She can win the d pawn and just wow, pokey, pokey main, pokey the beast. Yeah, she's undermining white center immediately. And what were you saying about the French defense? Look at this position. <laughs> Move nine. I told you I'd stop bagging on it. If you, if you, <laughs> okay, I just complimented it, even though I was blacked out when I did it. Um, anyway, but uh, no, the French defense strikes again, and uh, you've uh, you've proven it a great weapon for all your students. Ruby is playing aggressive chess, trying to use his pieces where they stand. Normally, normally a great thing. Maybe. Maybe giving up too many pawns in the process, though. Now, now Pokey is up three pawns and getting harder Rubius to mount to come back. Yeah, I agree with you. I think he didn't notice how difficult it was to hold on to the central pawns because he's not familiar with the French defense. And that's that's great about Pocky's preparation that he uh, that uh, she studied the French defense uh, weeks ago and she has been practicing constantly this setup. So it's I feel like. For pop champs, we try to do our best with the preparations, but if you are in a familiar territory where you know the plans, you know the setup, you know where the pieces should go, and you know what you play for, that of course is always very helpful. And that's why Pock is, is great at the London system yep. and the French defense, because she has more experience in these openings. Yep. A threat, the knight on c6 can be undermined by the capture on c6, and then the bishop on b4 is hanging. So I wonder if she will move the bishop away or will she spot that she could 
place that knight on d4 because there's a knight fork on e2, but that's a bit that's a bit too much, way too dank. Oh, a6. a6 oh, a6 didn't didn't guard the bishop, but now rook d1 instantly by Rubius, so Pocky has a chance to defend the bishop with the queen, queen e7 or queen a5. I like that even though I know Rubius wasn't, uh, sorry, uh, the move knight to c6 would have been better, everyone, because the bishop hangs, as Anna said. But I like that he played it quickly, Anna. Like, he, he played rook d1 quickly, attacks yeah. the queen. This tactic is still in the air. And um, I think he's recognizing that he, he's been getting under time pressure in a lot of games. You said that yourself. Yeah. So he's trying not to let that happen again. Exactly, exactly. And I was I was telling him too how how in most positions at chess there will be plenty of good moves so that you don't need to f always search for the perfect move because right. that's when you lo go low on time and it doesn't matter how winning the position is if you have five seconds. So he's trying to be more practical and that's great for his time management, yes. Look at this move, knight b6. I also like it. It's, it's obviously still a better position here for black because pokey is up three pawns for those who believe in math. Um... But it's not, um, it's not so simple. I mean, Rubius' pieces are very active here. But he plays f3, which is a good move in that he recognized the back rank and wants to get the king out. But we know it's a very risky move with that dark square diagonal in front of the king. Yeah, um, and now if Pocket spots that she has a check on C5, rato, eh? that flipante. would pick up the knight on es, es b6. Flipante. She takes on f3. Well, verdad, She's podría, also a bueno, good decision. She still has bishop c5 as it. next move if she, if she realizes that the knight on b6 could get into trouble. Yep. After queen takes f3, gusta, at okay. least there's a defensive move, bishop to e3. Uh, if queen c, well, queen c5 check, bishop e3, then the e5 knight is hanging. So even like this, there are so many tactical well, patterns plan here. Chat is... o sea. Tough position for him. Uh, but poke, poke este caballo me lo puedo llevar de free. Ah, pues no, no. Now, and it doesn't mean she may not pues see queen c5 next. She might see it right now, but but I think overall she's had a, a mission and she's been sticking to it. I'm up a bunch of pawns and I'm gonna trade pieces. It's absolutely smooth sailing. She takes the bishop on e5 and now she's threatening bishop to c5 and I'm sure she sees it. I'm sure she sees it because her grind. Oh, knight to d7 hangs the knight. She brushes her shoulder off. No, no big deal. Like instantly took yeah. that knight. Like instantly no problem wow yeah rubius was <laughs> rubius was drawing us an arrow to the c5 square i thought on on his stream so <laughs> what, what does that mean she's saying with the i don't speak fluid coolness I'm not i think cool. that was a w i, oh, I wasn't okay. looking that's, that's in the right w? moment I but i I'm always afraid I'm going to make an inadvertent, inappropriate sign that means something and so i don't i don't like to make signs with my hands it doesn't go well uh, maybe Ruby has offered a draw again. <laughs> oh, Ruby has offered a it's draw. Becoming... LOL. I see the chess.com game <laughs> chat going nuts with it. LMAO. No está nada mal. Eh, no está nada mal para el, para um, el primer torneo. O sea, no está nada mal. 50 subs. Ole, ole, ole. 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 Eh, ¿Cuál es el plan? Ok, we have checkmate one if, if she sees it. I think she will spot it. Again, she has been on the puzzle grind ever since she started practicing chess. So Yo it's entiendo, very likely that she sees it or she plays bishop c5 focus. and then goes for a similar o sea, idea. Queen e1 is checkmate in one, but bishop c5 or queen e3 will also lead to checkmate soon. What's he saying? Debería estar contra Magnus Carlsen esta señora. O sea... Hola? Magnus Carlsen should be crying. Es flipante, ¿eh? siempre encuentro la manera de cagarla, chat. Siempre encuentro la manera de cagarla, pero bueno. Aquí creo que me llevo una pieza gratis, ¿eh? Aquí me llevo una pieza gratis. O el alfil o esto. No está del todo, del todo, del todo acabado, ¿vale? Del todo, no creo que vea el mate porque está diciendo que va a obtener una de las piezas por free, que puede tomar either el d7 knight o el b4 bishop, así que no ve que es checkmate aquí para Pocky. Y no creo que vea el mate solo todavía, porque está diciendo que va a jugar este ya por ahora. Shout out to Mark 100 Net con el 100 dólares de donación, justo ahora. We love you, Mark. You're helping us reach that goal. I think we're going to get there before the day's over. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone, for the contribution. She defends the bishop on b4, allowing queen takes d7, but then bishop c5, queen f1 will be checkmating too. I think this is what she has set up. Yeah, I'm, sh I'm sure she sees yep. it. She Here plays we go. bishop c5. Here we go. Only move. 
Boom. So rather than going for the mate in one, she goes for the five head play of mate in two, even harder. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> no draw. He keeps no. offering her a draw and giving her a thumbs up. <laughs> draw so is a good funny. play here, says chess.com chat. I think they might be a little biased. There might be a Rubius fan lurking there. <clears throat> Nada! 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 I think that means nothing. I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> but I did stay in the oh, audience last night. Got it, right? Oh, some trick. I think Nada right? means nothing. Se fue a la verga. Tablas! Oh my god, I did not think I would win a single match in this tournament, so. That is, <laughs> I mean, Rubius is awesome, and obviously we hope he he gets a, a, a match that he wins soon too, but it was awesome to hear what Pokey just said. She said she didn't think she was going to win a single match this tournament. Obviously, she just mm -hmm. proved herself wrong, and any other doubters if there were any. So, congratulations to Pokey Main. And we are back here with the competitors of our first match of the day, and what a match it was. Pokey and Rubius, uh, this, this was awesome and a great way to start the day. Thank you. I, uh... We got we to gotta go to the chess here because the, it's the chess that's blowing our minds. You guys are both getting, you guys have both gotten so much better. You, you played fantastic chess, both of you. And Pokey, we, we, we went to this moment here in this first game where you played B4. And we were talking about how while this is a dangerous pawn, it could be one that backfires if you recognize the C file. How early did you realize that even though you lost this pawn, that the game was not over and that you had a chance to make a comeback here with this tactic? To be completely honest, um, pawn pushes are a weakness of mine for sure. So I was kind of, you know, I was feeling myself. I was like, let's do it. And immediately after I was like, oh no, he has check. Oh no, I block with my queen. Oh no, he has my rook. And I was this close to resigning. So close, so but close. But you didn't, you <laughs> yeah. didn't. But you could have taught me, don't resign. Uh, you know, uh, forget what the teacher said in, <laughs> <laughs> in a queen's gambit just keep playing but, so i kept playing and i got really lucky with the uh with the discover check and finding a tactic there so yeah it was kind of just i i felt bad i felt bad if i resigned there but if he asked me for a draw in that moment i would have accepted immediately immediately okay. why didn't you accept my draws they were there <laughs> Yeah, you offered yeah. them just a little too late. I'm like, mating too, and you're like, draw? <laughs> draw, yeah, it, it was fair, it was fair. And, and it, it is a good lesson for future games, right? You won the rook, mm -hmm. you took Pokey's rook, um, but you decided to keep the queens on the board. And is it because you just, you get nervous with the queens being traded, or were you, were you not realizing yeah. how big your advantage was if you had traded queens? Mm. No, I think it is the, the second thing, yeah. I always feel like, uh, and that's something I have to learn, that uh, I sometimes have to to uh, trade queens. Right. Because uh, if not, uh, yeah, the game goes very bad for me, like like this one. But one thing I want to say is that the, the most amazing thing about these two matches with Pokey were the openings, her pawn openings. Uh, it was like suddenly... Uh, I had like uh, zero pawns and she had taken an, almost all of my pawns in the second game. I don't know how she did it. Like, nice. I, it took me like three minutes to realize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. take so the really blame. I, I'm, I'm taking full, full responsibility because I think I prepared very, very complex openings for you. And Pocky knows her lines very well. So she, she has been practicing yeah. the London and the French defense. And even if, even if I show you a line, she will still have more experience in it. So for next time, I will know I need to go for something simpler where we, we keep our pawns safe. But it, I was in such a <laughs> difficult spot. And Danny knows I, I spent the whole match being nervous for both of you. I wanted both of you to do your best and i wish you could both win um but ruby is something Wait, can i mention something <laughs> anna is so sweet and cute for my match yeah. against xqc she sent me two videos that are like 10 plus minutes long oh me too hey, these are yeah, some yeah. things to remember <laughs> blah, blah, wait blah. she sent you then, videos too <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And then against Rubius, oh, she was like, for you. three minutes. She said, hey, listen, I love you guys both, and I care about you both, and I hope you both win, and I'm sorry, but, like, I'm just coaching you both, and I don't know what to do, and I hope you can get Yeah, yeah me too. Yeah, she said this. I was like, you're so nice. Yeah, she's amazing. Anna is amazing. The best teacher we could have. Absolutely. We, yeah. 
we, we've known that yeah, in the chess community. That the Anna, Anna is the biggest sweetheart in the chess community. We've known that secret for a while, but now the rest of the streaming community is figuring it out. She really is. And I, her coaching is evident. Pokey, you said in that moment when you won, you were just being honest. You were like, I didn't think I was going to win a match this whole tournament. Yeah. Now not only have you won one, you might be one of the favorites to move on to the championship bracket. I mean, how, how are you feeling about your chess right now? Um, I kind of just... Uh, put myself into this mindset of I'm here for a good time and so as long as the matches are fun I hope it's a fun viewing experience for everyone and if that's the case then I'm happy so in that sense you know less nerves and just hoping for the best yeah <laughs>